Fix this up here and draw your little map. Let's come on down here. We draw the coastline down through Atlantic City, on down here to Wilmington, Myrtle Beach, on down the coast very crudely. We're flying along out here somewhere. We've got an Omni radio station here in Atlantic City. We've got another one here at Norfolk, and we've got another one down here at Myrtle Beach. So we tune in this station here. And on our little dial window I showed you a minute ago, it says that we bear from that station, say, 300 degrees. Well, we draw a line of 300 degrees magnetic true bearing right through that station, which extends out here somewhere. We are somewhere along that line, but where? Okay, so we tune in this next station down here. And that one says in the little window that we have got a bearing of, say, 260 degrees. So we draw a line through that station at 260 degrees true. And where those two lines cross, that is where we are, right there. A little snooze, a few hours have gone by, and we are now approaching Miami. Now we'll show you what takes place in our approach, in our landing. Time for us to start a gradual descent. But first, we have to get clearance to approach. Richard? Miami Tower from Eastern 601, 10 miles north. Eastern 601, 10 miles north at 11. Make left turn in runway 17, wind south 10, altimeter 2998. Dick, let's have about 60% flaps. Maps coming 60. Gear down. Gear's coming down. Reverse the pitch of the propellers and push the air forward and just stop the plane. There. You see, that acts as a powerful brake. So next time when you're riding in an airliner and you hear the engines roar soon after you're on the ground, remember that's what he's doing, reversing the props to stop the airplane. schedule. I hope you folks enjoyed this as much as we did. Of course, this was purely and strictly a routine flight with beautiful weather. But maybe we've been able to show you some things you hadn't seen before. But you know, I'll bet you right now some of you are saying, well, sure, this was nice. It was lovely weather. But what happens when the weather is bad? Well, believe me, it's still routine. You see, in the first place, up where these super connies do most of the flying, the weather's always nice, way up on top of all the bad weather. Usually, it's only on approaches to our airports that weather becomes any problem, and then not much. Long as we have a half a mile of visibility and 200 foot of ceiling, no problem at all. 
Now, these minimums are arbitrarily set up by the Civil Aeronautics Administration in the interest of general safety. Actually, we can land one of these airplanes when the minimums are zero, zero. Let me show you. Here we are flying on instruments. We're in the clouds. It's one of those nights that the birds aren't even walking. We have been cleared to make an instrument approach. We have been cleared to the outer marker. This point we call the outer marker is located approximately five miles from the end of the runway. A light flashes on the cockpit panel. At the same time, the ADF needle indicates the passage of the marker, and we also get an audio signal. And at this point, the glide path is intercepted. The glide path is a sloping radio beacon down which the aircraft should make its descent to the runway and is indicated by the horizontal needle. When the needle is centered, the aircraft is on the glide path. If the needle moves above center, the aircraft is low and must climb back to the path. If the needle is below center, we're high on the glide path. This is a big help in itself. But in addition to the ILS, the instrument landing system, we have GCA, that is ground control approach. And that can give additional valuable assistance. Radar monitoring on uh, localizer voice as you approach the outer marker. By means of this radar, the GCA controller sees the approaching plane as a bit of light moving on his scope and can direct it safely to the airport. When the flight has been directed to the approach course, it is turned over to the radar monitor for final approach. Radar to Eastern, you're approaching the ILS course. Turn to a heading of 247, and I'm turning you over to the radar monitor for final approach. This is radar monitor. Etched right on the scope is both glide path and localizer, and any deviation can be detected and measured in feet. You are four miles from the end of the runway, 200 feet to the right, of course, but correcting nicely. Your glide path is good. You are three miles from the end of the runway. Your course is good. Glide path slightly low, but okay. You are two miles from the end of the runway. Your course is good. You're now approaching the middle marker. You're over the middle marker. The approach light should be coming into view. Approach lights in view. Thank you, GCA. That column of lights ahead shows the approach to the end of the airport runway. Each bar of light is 100 feet apart, and that ball of light traveling away from us at such a high rate of speed is leading us right to the approach end of the runway itself. The green light...